Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're gonna to be going over my rainwater filtering pump room in this video and we're gonna kind of go through it. I'm just gonna go through and give you a tour of all the components and how I set it up, how I laid it out. And if you guys have any questions, please put those down in the comments down below. This will be part of a series where I kind of dive into all the things that I've learned and uh, messed up on while I was doing my rainwater uh, journey out here in my cabin to make sure that we had more uh, water that we could use not only for flushing toilets and doing different things like that, but actually drink the rainwater. And I'm really happy with the way this pump room turned out and I hope you will be too. It's kind of a long walkthrough, so why don't we just jump right into it? And I will put the playlist with all the other rainwater uh, videos that I come out with right up top here. So if you guys wanna learn more and find out more information, you can follow along with that playlist. Let's get right into it. So when I first bought this house, this is what the pump room originally looked like on my first opening the door, first time I ever laid eyes on it. And it worked for probably, you know, two years before I really started uh, getting into uh, expanding it or fixing it or any of the other stuff. I didn't know anything about shallow well jet pumps or anything like that. So then I started playing around with uh, trying to run it off a battery and an inverter. And um, as time went on, I started adding filters and I didn't know anything about plumbing, as you can tell, and I was adding to their already crazy system. And then I started adding other filters and it just got completely out of hand until it was a giant mess. And so I decided to just kind of sketch out what I wanted on a piece of paper uh, using an, a picture of the pump room and then just kind of overlaying that and drawing over it. And uh, then just tore everything out and began the process of starting to build this system from scratch uh, now that I knew all the parts that I needed, where I wanted everything to go, and how I was going to lay it out. I just tore everything out and then started putting everything together. Really long weekend because, you know, the entire family was without water uh, for that weekend, and so I just really pushed through late into the night. Both days, this is probably two 12-hour days here, and we ended up with this end result, which I think you'll agree is a lot better and my plumbing skills have come a long way. Okay, let's take the pump room tour. So here it is, and I guess I'll start by saying one of the first things that you might have noticed is that it seems like the lights were always on in here, but actually this is a light backup system that I put in. So it has commercial LED lights glued to the top and the roof there, and they're actually connected to this little simple push button switch. So when the door is closed, all the lights turn off. And when you open the door, they automatically come on. Um, these are simple little switches that usually come in RVs for closet doors or cabinets or anything else. They're kind of old school, but they work really well. And it's uh, those are connected to a battery over in the corner. So they always operate as long as the system is charged up. Um, it does also have a normal light switch up here for that top light. And uh, yeah, so this is the pump room. This is my little stool for sitting on uh, when I wanna work on stuff. So why don't we get started? As we come inside here, I will walk you through this. So this pipe here comes from my underground cistern, which is 3000 gallons. It collects the rainwater, goes up. And we have valves for that and it comes down through a check valve. And the other side, this side here, actually goes to our above ground tank that's up above the house. And it's a 1500 gallon tank and we haul water from the city to fill that one when we need it. And that's why I have them separated because this one's potable city water and then this one's rainwater. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes I can open them both or I can adjust them so that they feed at different rates because they each have their own valve. It doesn't really matter because all the filters I have in place, uh, we can drink city water or rainwater, no big deal, so it doesn't really matter. Check valve here, this is a spin down filter right here. So you can actually clean that out just by giving that a little dump right there and all the sediment in the bottom will get flushed down and into this pipe, which is connected to my washing machine, just runs outside. And so you can kind of, you know, either take the pressure off the system or take this filter apart, clean off the big sediment that this is gonna stop right here. You know, if there's any kind of a leaf or pine needles or some kind of big debris, which there rarely ever is. It's usually clean just like this. I never really have to clean it. But that's our first line of defense. That's gonna go through our flex hoves and that's gonna run over to our one horsepower stainless steel shallow well jet pump, which is located here. And the reason that I went with stainless steel is because I've tried cast iron before. The first one we had worked fine. But when I started using rainwater, I noticed discoloration in my filter, which I assume is rust because of a different pH issue, or maybe it was a cheap pump, I'm not sure. But I just installed this one, thus the gloves. Didn't wanna get that white stuff all over me, but 
Um, so that's why I went with the stainless steel pump. It's a one horsepower and it's connected with three quarter inch fittings. I wish I could do one inch, but I didn't, I didn't plumb in the house before I bought it. So then our outlet comes out here and I have these uh, connection hoses right here. These just make it, they're quick connects with a little rubber gasket. And I don't know if people agree with me on that, but it's coming so handy when I have to do maintenance on the pump or change the pump. And that way I can just disconnect these real easy and uh, redo the PEX fittings, you know, in my lap or anything like that. It just saves me a lot of time and they haven't failed or anything so far, so no big deal there. And then that's gonna run over here to my two well troll tanks. These are pressure tanks. And when these, basically the, the use of a pressure tank is so that they fill with water and air and they pressurize. And that way, when the pump is turned off, that pressure comes from the tanks and slowly comes out so the pump doesn't have to turn on and off so many times. You want it to cycle as, as the least amount as possible. And so these two tanks really help out with that. And they need to be set at two PSI below what your cut in pressure is, but that's pretty technical. So we won't get into that. I try to put uh, basically valves on everything if I can, so I can isolate this or turn it off on. If I need to work on the system, I don't wanna have to drain those tanks because it wastes a lot of water draining them just to work on a leak or the pump. So I try to put valves pretty much everywhere so I can isolate those completely from the pump. This is our incoming line, runs over here so I can cut off this one, everything that way, and this pump, this uh, tank here as well, so that uh, I can work on the pump. Now you have a pressure switch located here. There's also a pressure tank or a pressure switch on the pump itself. And um, I'm actually using the one on the pump itself, but everybody recommends that you use the one that's closest to the tanks like this one, which is why I installed it there. However, I was having a problem with it cutting on at the right or wrong pressure for whatever reason. And I just found that the pressure switch on the pump itself over there was working more accurately. So this is basically just bypassed. It's running off 110. That pump can run off 220 or 110. And I just have it set to 110 and that's where that power is coming in. It bypasses this because that wasn't working for me. Runs over to the pump. Now we have our, our drain valve here in case we need to drain the tanks. Pressure relief valve here that I really need to run a uh, pipe out through the wall because if that ever trips, it's gonna flood in here. And so I definitely need to connect another piece of PVC and run that through the wall outside. This is the gauge that I use for my pressure. I am running in between 40 and 60 PSI. Generally, the pumps will come with a 30 to 50, but I just didn't like that water pressure when it got down to 30. And so I, I adjusted the pump up to uh, 40 to 60 PSI range. Then we're gonna move along. We can also isolate here, and that's gonna run up and over into our Simpure water filter system right here. And this is a triple stage whole house filter. And I will go over what these different uh, filters are. So the first one is a sediment filter. It's gonna remove rust, dirt, silt, sand, and other sediments. It is a five micron sediment filter. That's gonna clean things up for our granulated, activated carbon filter, um, which is gonna remove chlorine, VOCs, industrial solvents, bad taste, odor, and cloudiness. And then our third filter is gonna be a five micron activated carbon block filter, which is gonna further remove chlorine, taste, odors, volatile organic compounds, and also pharmaceuticals, and also clean up the turbidity a little bit more. And uh, that's gonna really clean things up for us. And they also have their pressure valves up top, pressure relief buttons. It would be really nice if I had a drain on the bottom of these, I guess, so that when I have to change out the filter, you unscrew the entire uh, housing and it's still full of water. So it's very heavy. It always splashes everywhere and it kind of makes a mess. And since I don't have a drain pan or my floor protected yet, uh, that's, that's a problem getting all this wood wet every time. So um, that would be nice, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. It does have a bypass system. So you have a valve over here, a valve up top and a valve over there. So you can close both of these and bypass it there so you can work on the filters without turning off the water if you need to. This is the ballast and uh, power source for the UV filter that's over there, but we'll get to that in just a second. So then we're gonna run up and over, and this is kind of overkill, but I do have another two-stage uh, system. 
And SimPure Life actually sent me this KDF filter recently, which is a granular activated carbon and KDF filter, which removes iron, lead, nickel, odors, heavy metals, and hydrogen sulfide. So a special thank you to SimPure because they sent me this a long time ago and I was taking a break. And so they've been waiting for this shout out forever. Thank you very much, SimPure. And then I also have this filter, which is a point zero, a point one micron. So this filter alone would usually be enough to filter out any kind of nasty organisms in the water. Um, but that's just kind of a safety. It used to be both were a 0.1 micro, micron filter, but I really didn't need to. And then they sent me this guy, so I installed that, which is awesome for heavy metals. It does not have a bypass, because I ran out of valves, but you can shut it off there if you need to, and over there. So it runs through those filters, comes down, and then here's my UV setup right here. It's a UV bulb that's gonna sterilize the DNA of any bacteria that might still be in the water which destroys them from replicating and causing any harm. So it's really our primary defense against anything that might be creepy and crawly in the water that, that managed to make it through all of this, which is very doubtful. But it does have a UV bulb inside that's on all the time and you can bypass that as well when you need to change out the bulb or clean the UV uh, casing that's around that, the quartz filter. So you can bypass that. You can also drain it right here through this tube that goes into the same drain that runs outside so I can kind of empty it out um, after I block it all off and uh, work on the light if I need to. And so that's going to come down and over and then it's going to come over here and this is a little water meter so I can just monitor the usage of water that we're going through which I think is handy and I would, uh, a word of caution, a lot of those pumps actually have metered uh, meter squared or meter cubed is the the way that they measure the water and then you have to do a bunch of math and calculations and I didn't look further to realize that they had one that just had US gallons so keep that in mind when you order yours if you want one then the water is going to come back around and underneath all the way over to here and it runs outside to a hose bib that's my outdoor garden hose and then it runs into the house and into the laundry room both of those do have shut off valves as well and they run into the house and supply us with our water. Now, this entire system is run off of solar. And so this is the solar setup over on this side. We can run off grid, we have grid power, but I wanted to run it completely on solar so if we ever have a power outage, the water just stays on naturally. And the way I do that is using a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter here because that water pump, one horsepower, uses about 11 to 1200 watts running with a pretty decent surge of energy and power. So 3000 watts is what I have there. And the half, ho half horsepower pump that I was using used about six, 700 watts. This one uses about 12, so about double that. And that is run off of three Lion Energy 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphates batteries. Uh, lithium iron phosphate and this particular one over here actually has a uh, Bluetooth and a heater built into it for an RV but that's not applicable in here because this is a heated room talk about that in a second and to be honest they're they're all connected through these bus bars but through my own advice on my channel I usually recommend that you go negative on on the farthest battery and the positive on the other farthest battery and then run the rest in a parallel connection so you continue to have 12 volts. But all the power has to run through three batteries equally. Um, but in this case, I, I had to add and subtract batteries. I wasn't sure how many I was gonna need. The bus bar was just easier for me and it's been working well so far with no problems. But I realized I could definitely wire that differently. We have a 60 amp PPT charge controller there that's getting its uh, power from a 240 watt solar panel on the roof. I'll show you a picture of that. And so that's gonna charge these batteries. It does a fantastic job. You can see this one's charging right now. We can even uh, see that we've got 117 watts coming in. It's a cloudy day. Voltage, all that good stuff. And we do have the LED lights that are above. Uh, connected to that as well. So that's the chargers. Here's our two LED light connections here. And so everything runs off solar really, really well. It'll run for about 
three, three or four days with no sun, which is awesome because the pump cycles on uh, very rarely because of the pressure tanks. And so it doesn't have to uh, keep up with that too much. They're generally full, but I did add a third battery down there just to give me that extra couple of days because if it's a snowstorm or it's really cloudy for a long time, then uh, you can run out of battery power. However, we do have grid power right there attached to that switch and it comes down to this surge protector and I can just move that plug that goes to the pump right into there and we're on grid power. So it's not the end of the world and it's pretty easy to switch. Um, we're also gonna have, this guy right here is actually going to a heater for this room and let me show you that real quick. That actually controls this little thermostat which is connected to this old heater right here which I could replace but frankly the way they make things nowadays, this old heater will probably outlast anything else that I put in here. I have it on its lowest setting, so it takes about 500 watts, and it just kind of heats this room whenever it gets down below 33 degrees. It maintains not a freezing temperature in here, so above freezing. Now, as far as the power source for that UV light right there, it runs over, it goes to this ballast, and that cord comes down. And I have that connected to this Lion Energy. Uh, this is gonna be the Safari ME. And it has 200 amp hours, more or less, of um, additional power. So the reason that I did this is because it only powers the UV light. Now let's say that we had the batteries die and I, I didn't come down here and switch it over to grid power. Or if I connected it to grid power and then we had an outage, then that would mean that the UV light is no longer on, but our pumps are still working, or we have pressure in the lines and we're drinking that water and it hasn't gone through an active UV bulb. So um, this way, if all the power goes out, I will lose pressure and the pump will not run long before the UV bulb goes out because this will run that UV bulb for an additional you know, day or two. So while all the pressure tanks go dry and the pump's not running and blah, 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 that UV light will stay on till the very last thing. And I will definitely have realized there's a problem by there from water pressure or whatever. And so that's just kind of an additional battery backup power just for the UV light located over there. And so I think that's pretty cool. It works pretty well. It's working as a basically a UPC or uninterruptible power supply, UPS, UPS system. system. So. I thought that was pretty cool and it's been doing its job very well. It always stays full because it is plugged into grid power. And so it's gonna pretty much just run all the time. And if there's a problem with the grid, it'll stay on for an extra day or two just to make sure that I have time to realize there's a problem. And um, we're good to go. So it's completely powering the UV light and it's being charged by everything else and everything else runs off solar and is doing a fantastic job. So that's pretty much it for the pump room tour. I will try and back out of here and kind of show you guys the whole thing one more time, but it's working really, really well. And I'll be doing a series on this on, in a little more detail to kind of go over some problems I've had, some things I've learned. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there and we'll go into the solar systems and stuff a little more detail. But I think that was a pretty good detailed tour to get us started and I absolutely love it. I'm thrilled to be drinking rainwater. It's been raining a lot this week and that tank is completely full and I haven't had to haul water in two weeks, so that's amazing. I will also show you how I monitor my water tanks uh, here in just a second, which is also a pretty cool setup. Well, there you go, guys. Other than uh, adding some labels, um, I wish I could have redone the floor, maybe added some drain pans so when you know water spills, it drains out and doesn't get the floor wet, or put in a waterproof flooring, something like that. And also, I would have liked to have painted the walls, but since I had to turn off the water to the house for the entire weekend just to do the plumbing, I couldn't justify the extra days that it would have taken to do that stuff. And so I just moved ahead with the plumbing, and it's it's a lot better than it was, that's for sure. So loving it so far, the water tastes great. Everything's working really, really well. No one's gotten sick, nothing bad has happened. And we've been running 100% off rainwater for the last 
month thanks to heavy rains in our area. So I'm absolutely loving this system. Uh, in addition to uh, being connected to being able to haul water as well when we're having droughts, it's been a really, really cool system. I hope that really helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And if this, if this video helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. So until the next video, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Thanks so much for watching you guys and happy camping.